Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. So this game tray will be the setup of the game. You'll have this here, and you'll have a tracker through here that will keep track of the incidents. Now the game will end when you get to nine incidences or 13 in a longer game or four player game, and you have some of your items here. You can also just set these aside and people can have access to this. It really doesn't take a whole lot of setup. Then you're gonna shuffle up the major policy deck. Everybody will get two of these and you'll be able to keep one. So keep this card when there are five vomits on a ride, discard to gain six. These are just things that you can kind of work towards or get a bonus if they occur. At the beginning of the game, you will pick one of these. Then you'll shuffle up the ride cards and you'll put a number of these out as like the entry point of the game. One for each player in the game. Then each of these will get two patrons on these little black ones that will come out and be a starting resource on these. And they would get the token up here that is signified on it. So you just kind of put this on to put a token on it. Then you'll shuffle the rest of the ride cards. And I'm just going to set them here just for ease of C because we only have so much room. And you'll put three of these face up for players to choose from as the game progresses. Then you'll take the minor policy cards and you'll put these by type that you can see here. And these will be set aside for the players to earn during the game. Then you're gonna shuffle up the improvement deck and each of these rides is gonna get an improvement card that will be set with it. So when you select one of these, you'll be also selecting those cards. Then players will take turns choosing, in reverse turn order, choosing one of these starting locations that will be their starting ride. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a turn here and kind of show you what will happen. So the first thing you're doing, now these won't be placed here, they're only placed here for ease of C. You're gonna pick one of these rides that you're going to build. These are the starter ones. Everybody has ownership over one of these when the game starts and you'll be choosing from these face up and they'll always be three face up. So you can just choose one of these and when you take it, you not only take the ride, but you'll take the card that's with it. So let's say we chose this one right here. We'll take this card and then at the end of the round, you're gonna put a new one out for the next player to be able to choose from. Well, these have no cost. We'll set these aside for now because we don't need them, but there's no cost associated with it. You just take whichever one that you want to take. Then you can build the ride. So what you'll do is you'll put the ride orthogonally adjacent to any ride that you want. So let's say I choose, I want to put it there. I will then take the icon there. I will take two patrons and put on it. And then I will put a ticket booth of my color signifying that I own or will profit from this ride. So a ticket booth, two patrons, and an icon token matching whatever is printed on there. Then I will take the improvement card and do whatever it says. Swap ownership of any two rides. So maybe there's another ride that I want. So I could swap, it doesn't have to be my own. I can just swap two ownership because this said so. And there's, there's a, a lot of things this could do. Each player takes a minor policy and turn order, you take one more. Add one of these danger tokens and two vomit riders to a ride. Swap the location of two rides. Two people on each ride become vomit. Add three uh, sick people to the park entrance. So th these are just things and you just do whatever one you pick and you're going to have that choice when you're choosing the ride and the danger improvement. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the eight sided die for each ride that you own. I'm going to put these down just so you can easily see. So this has one token on it and this one has one token on it because not a lot of danger has been put out. So I will roll the die. If I roll higher than that amount, I roll two for this, then this has succeeded and nothing will happen. But then I have to roll for my other one. If I roll here and it's equal to or less than, then I will have failed. So since I failed, I would add one additional danger to it because it, it is more dangerous and one of the patrons will leave. If you look here, each of these, uh, let me show you on this one, each of these will have an exit on it. So this one would, everybody would exit straight down, right? And each one may have different exits on it. So let's show you a few of these. So this one goes straight down. Uh, this ride would exit in any three of these directions of the arrow. This one can go this way or down. So on this one, somebody has to exit because I failed the roll. So he will come off, there's nothing there. So he'll go back to the park entrance. Otherwise, if let's say he would have been on this one, this arrow pointed down, he would come down onto this card right here. So the patrons will move if there is a failure. So the more danger you get on there, the more likely it is for you to roll the die in order to have a failure like we just showed. Now, if you ever have four danger at of the same type, so it's fine if you have different types, but if you have four of the same type, then the ride is going to close down. At that point, all patrons on it would exit. In this case, there's nowhere for it to go. So it would go back to the park entrance. Then you will get rid of these tokens. They go back to the supply. 
this will flip over to the ride close side and you'll get your little ticket booth back. At that point, you can choose one of the minor policies that you'll have, and these will give you bonuses. So you keep this card when a ride closes due to this icon. You return this to get three money. That's what most of these will do, is just give you money if you can choose which one will probably close down. So minor policies can give you additional income. Then the fourth step is very easy. For each person or patron on one of your rides, you're going to get a dollar. In this case, I have one, two, three. So I would get three money, which is really just victory points for the end of the game. After everybody has gone, you will go end of round. Now there's a few things to kind of signify for you. You're gonna have these green meeples. And when these come out, these represent people who are vomit induced or sick when they're on a ride. So anybody who has a green person on it, at the end of the round, after everybody has gone, they would vomit on the ride. And you would put an additional vomit token out. So they're the only ones that do that. Now, the other caveat here is you're going to have these group people that will come out, which will be these big ones. They represent five. So whenever you have five of the same type, the black ones, on the board, you can replace them with one of these gold ones. And they just represent five meeples on the board. And they'll pay out $5, one for each meeple that they represent. Now, I should further point out that every time a ride closes or there's an incident, this marker will continue to move up up here, and this will track how many rides have closed or how many incidents that you have. When it gets to 9, the game will end. Uh, there's a long version when you get to 13, which is recommended with four players, but let's say you're just playing to the 9. At that point, the game would end, and then you would score, and whoever has the most money or victory points will be the winner of the game, and that's how you play Danger Park.